In this video, we will show you how to design a bridge framework. First, what you need to do is to create an order. We will explain the design of a bridge framework based on Ontario teeth. For teeth 21 and 23, we are choosing single copying. And for 22, library pontic. Next, select all teeth and choose bridge. The shape of the connector will be defined by default. You can change it now by choosing different shapes from the drop-down list or modify it later during the design process. Place annotations in sequence shown in the overview window. The insertion direction step comes next after annotations. This is an important step that ensures the correct fit and seal of the restoration. The software automatically calculates the best insertion direction with the least amount of undercuts, but you are still able to set the insertion direction manually. Make sure that your margin line is outside of undercut areas. Adjusting the insertion direction gives you the opportunity to modify the height of the restoration, which is important when you place the restoration in milling blanks. Lower height means that you can use a thinner blank, which gives you the possibility to save materials and lower production costs. Once the insertion direction for the bridge, as well as the margin line and the die interface for both teeth are set, you can start designing the bridge framework. The software will automatically place the coppings and the pontic. Now you can adjust the design to your needs. Use Sculpt Toolkit to do that. At first, adjust length, shape and size of the coppings according to remaining T and occlusion. Then do the same for the pontic. When positions are set, you can modify connectors. To do that, just simply double-click on one of them. Dental Designer automatically defines the shape of the connector, which is set in control panel. You can change it by selecting a new one using the drop-down menu list from Connector Settings in Edit Connector Substep. Check the Show Plane checkbox and make the 2D cross section appear on the screen. The position of that plane can be moved along the connector with the cross section slider. At the bottom of the screen, you can see two connector editing windows and in the middle of them, a 2D cross section preview window. It allows you to modify connectors directly in these windows by dragging their blue points. The points turn yellow when active. Move them to the correct position and when ready, use the copy button if you wish to apply the same changes from one side of the connector to the other and then modify it. The area of minimum thickness window shows the 2D cross section of the connector and is color coded. The green color means that the connector has sufficient thickness. You can also edit the shape of the connector directly in the main window. You can move the mouse over the connector until the cursor turns into a four-headed arrow to drag the whole connector. While your mouse is on the connector, you can also use green control points to modify the connector's thickness. For this, click on one of the points and drag it up or down. To switch to another connector, simply click on it. Once the connectors are set according to your wish and material requirements, click Next to get to the finalized step. Use the tools from Sculpt Toolkit for the Add Remove function or to smooth your design. We recommend to check the Non-Millable Areas option in the Visualization sliders and set its value according to the size of the tools you are going to use. That way you are able to see all the areas which won't be milled with a certain burr size during the manufacturing process. Smoothing those areas at this point definitely saves time for the lab technician during manual processing. When your bridge design is ready, click Next. We hope this was helpful. 
Thank you for watching.